Greetings Whiskey Lovers, welcome to Whiskey Straight. My name is Al and thank you for joining me on my spiritual journey. Before I start my review of uh, Whiskey Number 2, I'd just like to say a quick word of thanks for everyone for your support and encouragement uh, after my first review of the Powers Gold label. Thank you for your feedback and your tips and I've taken it all on board. Uh, so for review number two, I have changed location, not only in terms of where I'm sitting, but also in terms of the product I'm reviewing. So this time we're heading over to Scotland, uh, to the Orkney Islands to be precise, and having a look at the Highland Park 12 year old single malt Viking Honour. Now, <coughs> this particular expression here is bottled at 40% ABV, and uh, it's part of their hero's range and is designed to celebrate Orkney's Viking heritage and Highland Park Agley Billet as the distillery's life and soul. So uh, let's have a little look at that. As we all know too well uh, in many incidents, inc instances, if we can get the word out right, uh, a lot of the background stories and, and uh, ideas that are put out uh, when it comes to certain bottlings, a lot of them are can be taken with a pinch of salt or made up where there's some tenuous link to a little story, maybe a myth or an urban legend or something like that, and it's all like marketing mumbo jumbo designed to sort of like sax up the product, sort of like romanticize it and, and uh, give it a sort of resonance with the, the whiskey buy in public. And uh, quite frankly, a lot of that in many cases comes with a distinct aroma of, well aroma, a whiff more like of festering BS and none of us like that. So I've said before that I'm not really one for going into the background stories and whiskies or anything like that because I'm here to look at what's in the bottle, how it tastes and basically give my view on it but however I'll deviate from that course on this occasion because this spotting actually lends itself to it when you're actually making such a big play on the heritage when you've designed such a lovely bottle as this and as you can see yourselves it's and for those many of you probably have it it's a fantastically well designed bottle you know it's one of those ones that now that well may finish it you're not going to throw it out you're going to keep it because it really is a work of art so does the story stand up to scrutiny well yes it does because Highland Park or Highland Park are telling the truth. They are looking back at the island's rich Viking heritage uh, that's gone back for over a thousand years uh, when it was ruled uh, by the Scandinavians, by the Norse men. And, uh, and, and there's quite a bit of still that rich culture and heritage there from that era uh, in today's Orkney society. The name Orkney actually comes from the old Norse name for the island which was Orkney R uh, and that generally means Seal Island or Island of the Seals and I've never been to Orkney but hopefully that will change someday and uh, definitely when I go there Highland Park is top of the list. So <coughs> if you're looking back at the heritage yes they had it a rich heritage for many centuries of Viking rule, but how then did it uh, become a Scottish island? Well, there's quite an interesting story about this, and um, when I looked into it and did a bit of research, uh, <laughs> it was a, uh, you know, it just shows that whiskey drinking can be educational as well. It all stems back to 1468 when Christian I, who was king of Denmark, Sweden and Norway uh, in an effort to sort of improve relations with Scotland which apparently weren't too great at the time uh, offered his daughter Margaret uh, as the bride to James III of Scotland now as part of that there was a big generous rich dairy drawn up with uh, many thousands of florins, which were the, the currency there at the time, not in Scotland, obviously. And, uh, but just in case that didn't all work out, Orkney, as well as Shetland, 
was offered as collateral just in case and lo and behold called Christian the first there he uh, got into a few financial diffs couldn't pony up the money so on the 20th of February 1472 he had a forfeit uh, Orkney to the Scotland or to, to Scotland and uh, Shetland obviously it was all part of the deal I'm not too sure of the date I think there was different dates there but uh, anyway he lost those two territories and, and probably a good thing that it's much to our advantage especially if you're a whiskey lover because they do make mighty fine whiskey there and uh, all the better to it so that little history lesson out of the way let's have a look at the bottle uh, what's in it and see if it actually is worthy of being called Viking Honor so let's get into a bit of the dosing here That's nice. Uh, when, when, you, when you do a bit of reading about this, it says it says spoken peat there, but uh, from the first nosing, it's it's quite gentle. It's heather. It's honey. It's sweet. Uh, all very pleasant. Uh, now there we go. Get a little bit deeper into the into the into the Glen Cairn there and you've got the uh, there's a grassy note comes through and with it a bit of earthiness and then you're getting that touch of peat that's just coming in in the back of that and it lingers there it's nice and it's nice because it's not overpowering it, it's balanced out the, the honey the sweetness the heather is still there and that peatiness sort of melds all in with it which is which is nice because it doesn't overpower it as there's a tendency with a lot of peaty whiskies. It's, there's, there's dried fruit coming through there it's, and, and there is a bit of a gentle smokiness that starts to emerge uh, sort of thunders through it all uh, and all the while when that's the case there's a nice sweet honey note there which is quite distinct throughout it and right on the back end there's a very vibrant rich aroma of orange peel I have to say I'm quite impressed with that nose there's a lot going on there there's a lot to take in and uh, but the nice thing is it balances itself out very well everything complements each other and there's nothing that just whops out and baps you on the back it's uh, very nice so let's see what it tastes like very nice there's a honey sweetness there right from the off that's right right up front and there's a nice gentle heat there as well and as it uh, sort of coats the mouth it's oh yeah you're getting dried fruits sultanas coming in there a touch of apricot I don't generally like apricot in fact it's it's a devil food but does work well when it blends in and combines with those other flavours. Mm. Oh yeah, now we're having this on the second sip there where the peaty smoky elements come into play. Yeah they're barely no in fact they're not noticeable in the first step at all but now they come into play but the nice thing about it is they're not overpowering in any way they're they're there but that nice sweetness the dried fruits and all is still running through it with the peat and the smoky elements all mingled in there as well and I uh, The, the, the orange is still in there as well but unlike the nose eh, on the taste here 
the orange is darker. It's it's like a like a dark chocolate orange. It's very nice, very very nice. Oh yeah, and there's a nice rich mouth feel there as well. It's like a medium bodied coffee. That's what you always like to keep around. It's I'm very impressed with this. I definitely am, and now it's it's not something that I thought I was going to be overly impressed with, but as you can see, I've got down through it rightly. Well, I have shared it with some friends, obviously, and uh, yeah, overall, that is a it's a pretty damn good pour. Everything comes together well. There's nothing overpowering about it. In any shape or form, there's lots of aromas, there's lots of flavours in there, but nothing stands out to the extent that it's overpowering. They all work together well. There are certain elements in there that if they were too strong, it, it just wouldn't work. But it's like every aroma, every element, every flavour is a team player, and they're all playing uh, for the overall goal of making this one damn good whiskey. And that's what it is. And I think. The Vikings indeed would be very impressed. It does live up to its name of Viking Honor. Highland Park have done a great job there. And uh, it's, a, it's a pretty impressive package all around. The bottling is brilliant. The story behind it is brilliant. What's in the bottle is brilliant. You know, you really can't fault it. And, uh, you know, it's what recommend a retail price thirty seven pounds? You'll probably get it cheaper in most places, probably as little as thirty pounds, and, and and that's a steal for the quality that's there in. And I, uh, I really can't fault it. You know, it's there's obviously there's better whiskies out there, but for thirty quid, that's hard to beat. And I'm liking it a hell of a lot better than I ever thought I was going to. I'll, I'll definitely be getting another bottle of that and I would encourage you to do as well so I'll not ramble on any longer uh, thanks again for watching please hit the subscribe button if you've enjoyed this even if you haven't enjoyed it you can hit the subscribe button and have a go at me no I'm just joking I'm not you hit the subscribe button but don't have a go uh, comment uh, down below and uh, don't forget to hit the old uh, bell symbol there so that you're notified of any future videos and there will hopefully be quite a few more of those I'm hoping to now that I'm sort of getting my head around this and getting into the groove getting maybe at least two out every week and uh, maybe more you never know so uh, thanks again for watching uh, and until the next time stay safe Keep cramming and most of all, enjoy your whiskey. And as the Vikings would say, skull. <laughs>